Hey everybody, welcome back to The Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? Canned tuna fish is inexpensive, versatile, healthy, and delicious. Whether you're making a double-decker tuna club sandwich with bacon, lettuce, and tomato, a rich and cheesy tuna melt sandwich on garlic butter toasted baguette, or even a low-carb tuna melt sandwich on a portobello mushroom cap with garden fresh tomatoes. These are just a few simple things you can make with canned tuna fish. But some people can't or choose not to eat fish. And they eat fishless tuna instead. I kid you not, fishless tuna is for real. See it says so right on the can, fishless tuna. The picture on the can sure does look good, but I'm not too sure about this. Especially when it's made with vegetable protein, which I loathe when it's used as an extender and mixed with real meat. But with this being solely vegetable protein on its own, I may have a different opinion. But to be honest, I'm still a little pessimistic, but I'll try anything once because I do this for you, the people, so you don't have to. When I did the video using American Tuna brand canned tuna, people were shocked it was over $5 a can, but that's real tuna. This can of fishless tuna cost me $8.53, so it's pretty expensive to be a vegan. I was really surprised it only takes seven ingredients to make fishless tuna. I surely would have thought it would take much more to mimic the taste and texture of tuna. Notice the first ingredient is water, but in cans of real tuna, the first ingredient is tuna. There's five one and a half ounce servings in this 13 ounce can. So you only end up getting seven and a half ounces of product after you drain the 5.5 ounces of water, which compared to a 12 ounce can of real tuna, where you get nine ounces of product after you drain the three ounces of water. Per one and a half ounce serving, there's 60 calories, one gram of total fat, no trans fat, saturated fat, or cholesterol. Then there's 140 milligrams of sodium, five carbohydrates, no fiber, less than one gram of sugars, and seven grams of protein. Now, let's compare that to a typical can of tuna and water. Per two ounce serving, there's 60 calories, 0.5 grams of total fat, no saturated fat, no trans fat, no monounsaturated fat, 0.5 grams of polyunsaturated fat, which is a good fat, 20 milligrams of cholesterol, then there's 190 milligrams of sodium, 150 milligrams of potassium, no carbs, no fiber, and 13 grams of protein. Numbers wise, the real tuna is the healthier of the two. But the good news is, even if you're a vegan, you can store food for a long time. This has over a two year shelf life. When I opened up the can of fishless tuna, it kind of sort of resembled tuna fish and kind of sort of smelled like tuna fish. But the true test will be how it tastes. Once the water was drained, it still somewhat looked like tuna. That was until I saw this. I know I always describe TVP as feeling like a sponge in your mouth, but now this really looks like a sponge. Yikes. So I went in for a bite. And this really looks nothing like tuna. That's probably because it's not tuna, duh. I didn't really expect it to look exactly like tuna, but I guess it's close enough. But as soon as I bit down into the fishless tuna, there was that all too familiar, awful spongy texture I hate. This feels absolutely nothing like meat of any kind. It literally feels like you're eating a sponge, which feels gross in your mouth. But the good news is the flavor isn't bad and has a slight tuna flavor, but there's no way this would fool anyone if they thought they were eating real tuna. So let's get it out of the can and make a little tuna salad for a tuna salad sandwich. That should give it a true test and see if it would pass as tuna in a tuna salad sandwich. In a large bowl, add the fishless tuna, mayonnaise, relish, and I like dill relish, but you can use sweet pickle relish if you like. And finally, some salt and pepper. I always add fresh onion to my tuna salad, but I wasn't sure if this was worthy of wasting or taking the time to chop up an onion. Mix everything all together until it's well combined. After giving it a good mix, it looks like the fishless tuna has leached some excess water. Now it's a bit watery. With everything mixed all together, I took a bite and now the flavor is a bit better. And very faintly, makes you think you're eating tuna. But still, that texture is something I cannot get past. Now let's put our tuna salad sandwich together. Pile as little or as much tuna as you like onto bread or toast.
then put it together, cut it, and eat it. By appearance, this would pass as a tuna salad sandwich, although a bit watery. But let's see if it would pass as a tuna salad sandwich taste-wise. I took a bite. It did somewhat taste like a bland tuna salad sandwich. I don't mean to beat a dead horse here, but the texture is awful. Personally, this is not for me, and I could never eat this and really enjoy it. But more power to vegans and vegetarians that do enjoy it. But it's definitely not for everyone. With all of that said, it's not a bad product for the people that choose to eat it. So I can't be too hard on something that simply doesn't appeal to me personally. If I was a vegan or vegetarian, this definitely serves its purpose. And I'd probably give it a 7 or an 8. But I'm not a vegan or vegetarian, I'm 100% carnivore, and I'm biased to meat. So I'm going to meet, no pun intended, in the middle and give it a 5 out of 10. If you'd like to help support the Wolf Pit, please consider being a patron. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month, that's only $12, for the whole year. Or you can pledge more, that's up to you. Either way, every little bit's appreciated and helps me produce more high quality videos more often for you, the people. Thank you all very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.